Hello, my friends. I'm Rich Larson, and I'm the IRC Tire Guy. Today, we're here at what I call Trash Heap. There's, this is just not too far away from my house, and it's an easy place for me to get out and ride. There's a lot of junk here, and eventually this is all going to be gone, but I'm going to ride it while I have it. Now, as you can see, I've got two bikes here. I've got my Beta 300 RR Race Edition. Uh, this is the one I said I choose to ride this bike. And you guys may have seen, I did a comparison between the 300 and the 200 RR. You can check that video out right here. Now, if you saw that video, you saw I, I was, I was loving the 200, but quite a few people asked me, hey, why don't you ride a 250? Couldn't that be the best of both worlds? You're getting the lightweight feel of the smaller engine, but also the power of the 300. Uh, and I said, that's probably a good idea. So I went ahead and bought a Beta 250 RR. So this is not the race edition. This is, comes with the Sax suspension. Um, and essentially what I wanted to do is show you guys the difference between the 250 and the 300, as well as the RR and the race edition, right? So what I want to do is show you guys exactly what I do to every single bike that I ride. And when I say what I do, I mean what Cutlers does to every single bike that I ride. I give it to them, I say give it the Rich Larson treatment and they dial me in. So starting with protection. Uh, of course, I do all the protection. That's the first thing. I ride a lot of technical hard and roll stuff. So I go front and rear rotor protection always. I've got radiator guards. Uh, these are all bulletproof designs guards. They work really well. They had them in stock, so I got them. Um, something I put on every single bike, especially lately, has been these cross-link components uh, swing arm guards. You can see they're on both bikes. I've had them on the previous betas. I've put hundreds of hours on one set, and uh, they just last and last and last. Keep that swing arm fresh, make it great for resale. I also always put on an SXS skid plate. Um, I've been riding for John, John Seahorn, SXS. He's been supporting me for a long time. I mean, probably almost 10 years. Uh, and I think they're the best skid plates. You know, they're the first ever linkage protection plates. As soon as I went to a linkage bike from a KTM 300, I went to a Husky that had linkage and man, I, I needed that slide plate and it makes a huge difference. I, I put uh, Astra handlebars on both of these. They've got, I've got the Aurora series. Um, yeah, the lower bend, it's better for those steep, steep technical situations, comfortable bar. I'm used to them now and I, I really like them. Uh, they're strong too. You know, I, I uh, like I said, I throw bikes down lifts. So, uh, of course, IRC tires, VX30 front, JX8 rear. That's pretty much the spiel, right? Now, what I wanted to do today was show you guys the difference between stock jetting and the tuned up jetting that I do with the Suzuki needle. This bike's got a uh, 162 main, an NECW needle. Uh, I believe it's on third clip right now and a 38 pilot. Now, this bike runs really, really good. Actually, you know what? I put a 40 Pilot in it. This bike runs really, really solid. And I want you guys to hear the differences between the stock bike. Then what we're gonna do is all we're gonna do is change the needle. I've got a Suzuki needle here in my pack and uh, I'm gonna run it stock. I want you guys to listen to the differences in the machine, the way the bike runs. And this is a big piece of why I choose the Beta. It's, it's rare to find a bike that runs as good as these bikes do. So uh, hopefully this works. Hopefully you guys can hear the difference. Um, I'm gonna explain what I'm hearing, what I'm feeling. And uh, yeah, we're gonna hit some of this uh, trash and uh, have a good time. So let's get after it. All right guys, so we are going to start on the bike that I've been riding, my Beta 300 RR Race Edition. Now again, I jetted this thing in. We've got a 40 Pilot NECW Suzuki Needle on third clip and a 162 main. And I want you guys to hear how this thing sounds, how it runs. We're gonna compare and then we're gonna make some adjustments and see if we can show you guys the difference that I'm feeling. So first off, the biggest thing for me about the Beta is how smooth it runs. If you can hear right here how steady this low power zone is, go ahead and listen. Even the high end pings are consistent. They're all one frequency, one consistent. You can just hear the bike running. It's, it feels perfect to me. There's no three stroke. There's no uneven idle. No matter where I am in the power, it's always smooth. Now, of course, if it's not jetted right, it won't do that. But I've had the most success 
with the Suzuki needles and the best success with jetting on these betas. Um, there's something about the way that they run to me that just, if it, it resonates with me. One more time, listen to it. I'll hit a couple obstacles too. Even there, smooth, smooth power. Hey, Rome. Romer's gonna be in the video or get ran over. You can hear, even when I input power, it has a very consistent, smooth delivery. Low, controlled. Some about these bikes, man. There's something about the way that they run that just is, it's perfect to me. Now, what I'm gonna do immediately, we're gonna go over and I want you guys to listen to what this 250 sounds like. Again, this is stock jetting and we're gonna make a couple adjustments. But before then, I want you guys to hear how this thing sounds. I mean, I'm telling you, I hope you guys can hear the difference. Like I said, I didn't know if this video is gonna work out or not because I'm not sure if you guys are audibly gonna be able to hear the differences in the way these things, it's that smooth bottom consistency that I'm looking for. And I feel like I'm not getting it with this stock jetting. One more time, listen to it. Even there. You can hear it's almost skipping at times. We're looking for that smooth, and I can't make it do it as smooth as that 300. Hear those inconsistencies. So let's hear when I approach an obstacle. Ow, hit my hand on my rear fender there. Also, this one doesn't turn quite as good, which is kind of interesting. Just a little bit uneven. Stalski. Even that input there, as I kind of pivoted over that concrete ballast, you could hear it's almost a uneven increase or an uh, uneven ascent of power. It's really interesting, the differences here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the jetting and uh, see if we can clean it up a little bit. Okay, we're gonna go N-E-C-J on clip number two. Damn it. <sighs> Drop it in the dirt every time. All right guys, so we just added the N-E-C-J needle on second clip. Now, the goal here is to find that smooth bottom end power. And one thing I wanted to add that I also did is I turn my idle down a lot. I want my bike to be on the bottom end of the power. I want it to be on the bottom end, almost stalling all of the time. In fact, if I chop the throttle, it actually does shut off. And there's a couple reasons for that. One is if I'm coming into a really, really, really steep downhill, I don't want to have to be fumbling for my kill switch when I'm walking my bike down it, right? That's one kind of reason. Now the other bigger reason is the input of power. I'm always holding the throttle at a very low, low power delivery, keeping it down in the bottom and actuating my movement with my clutch. So my goal is 
at very slow speeds to use my clutch to maintain balance. And that's what I'm doing all the time. I'm never using a choppy throttle, I'm a very steady throttle. That allows me for a higher level of traction control. Now, a great way for you guys to practice your steady delivery of power and actuating movement with your clutch is turn your idle down to nothing. So that's something that I do. I really like my bike to idle low. So I want you to hear here where it's idling. We also change the air screw. We're about a, a turn and a half out. And again, we change that needle and hopefully that's where we get the biggest difference. So here we go. First off, let's hear the idle. Low, like almost stalling. I bet if I give it a couple revs. Sounds good. These betas are crispy sounding. That's about it. That's what we're looking for. I like that bike to be down in the bottom, almost stalling. Now, Let's hear how it sounds with the new Suzuki needle. I can definitely get it bike way lower into the power. You can hear it's down in the bottom now. Listen to the difference between those two. I'll put them both in comparison up on the screen here, but listen to the bike here. I'm riding slow speed stuff. This is how I approach obstacles in that low end power. That's a lot better. Listen, low power. Nice snap off the bottom. Like I said, holding steady throttle. Slipping the clutch a little even. Nice. You can hear it's a lot, a lot cleaner down on the bottom, not so uneven. Always trying to get it better and better and better. Now, I will say we have a 38 pilot in this with the Suzuki NECJ needle. Now that bike has a 40 pilot and an NECW needle. So the W needle is slightly richer <laughs> than the J. So this is the thing about jetting. You're always messing. You're always trying to just find that perfect zone. If I change this to a 40, we might even smooth it out a little bit more on the bottom. That being said, I hope you guys can hear the difference between that stock needle and the Suzuki needle. Again, I think more than anything, it comes down to preference. It comes down to what you're looking for. The sound of the machine that you want, the thing that resonates with you. And I'm telling you, something about these betas, man, they resonate with me. Second gear wide. <laughs> I just love riding them. Now, that being said, I'm gonna ride different bikes. I am gonna test a whole, I've got a whole bunch of tests coming up for you guys that I think you're really gonna enjoy. But as of right now, I think the betas run the best. Uh, that one runs a little better right now. We may need to make a few more adjustments. I'm gonna have a long-term review coming out here soon of actually putting time on this 250 
feels really fun goofing around right now. I think uh, there's a lot of little interesting things. You've got the oil injection on this. Again, the sax suspension. Seems like the turning radius isn't quite as much, so there might be a little change. Maybe it's just not as worn in as mine. I take the stops out on these. There's a lot of little things that I do on these bikes to, to make them suit my style. Uh, and that's kind of what I wanted to show you guys today, kind of having some fun doing a little bit of jetting and uh, testing it out, trying to make it as smooth as possible. But I hope you guys are enjoying the channel. And uh, if you are, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, as well as follow us on Instagram, at IRCMoto, my personal Instagram page, at RichLarson511. And until next time, keep shredding.